I looked up the definition of the word sacrifice. First thing that popped up on my computer was something you slaughter for a god. Wow, that's a little harsh, isn't it? When was the last time you slaughtered something? Well, when I got around to a real dictionary, this is what it said. It said, to forfeit something for something else considered to have greater value. Sacrifice does not mean giving up something for nothing. It means giving up one thing for something else we believe is worth more. You know what a sacrifice is in baseball, don't you? It's, it's when your team has a runner in a range of scoring. Let's say he's on third base. And you're the next batter up to bat. Well, you hit the ball to a place where you get out. Maybe even intentionally. But in a way that the other base runner can run home and score a run for your team. It's a sacrifice. I give up getting on base myself so that our team can score a run. Well, if you don't understand baseball, uh, that may not make sense. But here's my point. Instead of just focusing on the wonderful, unselfish act in that kind of sacrifice, we really need to look at it as the player's real commitment to the team's value system. Actually, the value of the team scoring always far outweighs the value of me getting on base and me looking good. Sacrifice is a matter of understanding higher and lesser values. Okay, let me translate this. The person who lays down his life for his family has chosen to place more value on their lives than on his own. I think we practice this every day, probably without even noticing. Almost every day we make judgments about the things and people and their value, and something of greater value. It's often easy to give up something we believe is of lesser value. You know this as well as I do. So actually, it's funny that our society tries to mess with us all the time on this. It says, lose weight without giving up your favorite foods, right? Or get the body you want without working out. Get rich without having to work hard. But we know better, right? We know that there's always a price to pay. If you want to lose weight, you have to give up the junk food. If you want to get ripped, you have to work out regularly. We teach our kids, if you want to get something, you have to work hard and save your money. Every day, we make decisions about sacrifice. I will sacrifice this piece of cake because I need to fit into these pants. I heard somebody say that once. Another example. At the end of the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade movie, Elsa, the beautiful Nazi uh, villainess, is dangling over the abyss with one of her hands held by Indiana Jones, while she stretches the other hand out to reach the Holy Grail. It's just out of her reach. She refuses to give Indiana her other hand and risks her life to grab the artifact. The Holy Grail is of higher value to her, and she's rewarded with a plummet to her death. But then, Indiana Jones himself almost suffers the same fate. As his dad holds his hand, he reaches for the same Holy Grail. But he listens to his dad's advice, and he sacrifices the thing that is worth less, the artifact, for the thing that he values more, his life, and the chance for another adventure. Okay, here's my point. Sacrifice always reveals our personal value system. How and what we sacrifice exposes our personal value system. All right, now go to Romans 12, verse 1. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, it says, holy and acceptable to God. In the message, it says it like this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around, and life, and place it before God as an offering. It's you. It's you on the altar, like Abraham about to sacrifice Isaac, like the Old Testament priest sacrificing a lamb to God. Paul's instruction here is to live completely and totally as a sacrifice to God. Every inch of your body, every word, every attitude, every dream, every penny in your accounts. Why? What is the higher value? So what did Jesus do on the cross? 
if Jesus was to die a torturous death on the cross, something had to have been a higher value than his own life. Something was way higher value. Remember, sacrifice reveals your personal value system. Jesus values your salvation more than he valued his own life. And as, he, as we looked at last week, he says, pick up your cross and come on, let's go. To follow Jesus, count the cost. He says, and this is Luke 14, where we were last Sunday morning. What does it cost? It costs everything. Boy, does this ever tie into what we looked about as we talked about commitment and faith and stewardship and, and consecration. Sacrifice without faith disappears. Consecration without sacrifice? No. Nope. Stewardship without sacrifice? Without faith? Yeah, you got nothing. All of these are inseparable. All of these are walking in the way of Jesus. One last thought. Hebrews 13 talks about the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus was, was tortured and killed outside the city, it says. Interestingly, in verse 13, he tells us, go outside the city just like him and bear the same repro reproach he did. Get off my comfortable seat and walk the way Jesus walked. Get outside your old, messed up value system and live a life of sacrifice. Demonstrate your true value system by the way you live. Well, what will I surrender for what is higher value? The highest treasure meets the deepest need. Reconciliation with God. That's the deepest need. That's the highest treasure. Walking the way of Jesus is walking the road of sacrifice. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is walking the way of Jesus. Now back to the definition I started with. Remember I said slaughtering something for your God? I don't know about you, but there are things in my life that need to be slaughtered for my God. Ready? Let's get serious about walking the way of Jesus. Maybe I need to sacrifice this shirt for the sake of my self-esteem. 